I have to say, under this jurisdiction, the supreme priesthood and wonderment, it is a glory to my creation that I stand here before thee as a witness to time and reality, and know all truth is beyond subjective and well into the objective divine levels of categorization among the elite now. And for that I have no issue. For that I have no problem. For that I stand as equal to the masters. For I get it. I get it. It's all about replicating the beauty you see as a karmic divine avatar of holiness in the conscience of the Lord. And in that I have no issue or problem. And I fully accept this liberty under a divine realm of democratic process in a governmental system of genius. Thank you for your time. Don't run into the bivouac with a main shield. You know they'll find your onion. That's okay. Because I've got something else. I've got something more than you could handle. Something more than you know. What is it, Jake? Is it your baby? Fuck, swear to wear it. <laughs> no, it's something much better than that, much bigger actually. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. Because I'm going to make it the MacGuffin of this entire documentary to find out exactly what the bigger and better thing than my groiny, sweaty, palpitating fathers might be. Do you understand? Yeah. We are one. We are apex. And we contain the intergalactic glory as I see quantum into the finery, the dust of the uber perception. We got this. I'm seeing the thoughtful, the full grain of my own psyche. It's either degradation in my psychology or its perspective gone wild. I can see the very fabric. Yeah. Yes, we are made up of tiny, tiny animated frequency granules, creating light, reflecting light, being light, bamboozling us with vivid imagery and shades of wonder and reality. That is the truth of reality under a divine God! I have said it. Now be upon your onions. Grant me well the symposium of this night. So, we have a main radio field. And we're operating in a concentric center of unified forces. <laughs> we're going to have to uh, come up with solutions to impregnate the enemy units in all localized hostile regions. To do this, we have a key number of strategies working in pre-Black Ops Cyber Division, which is basically a non-lethal extraneous element of the theoretical beyond that of the British increment, which is in itself a somewhat believed in but not proven aspects of the British military higher than the SAS. It's called the increment. There's another word for it but I can't remember. But we don't know if they exist. No one knows if they exist apart from a very shadowy elite few. Okay? They do things that no one knows about officially. Right? It's just, just leave it there. Okay? It's very scary, it's very disturbing. 
You don't want your children involved. No one wants any shit like that in their face. Okay? So what we have to do in the anti avant-garde military wing is um, approach global world peace and sustenance and benefit of man and benevolence of harmony of soul and jurisdiction of consciousness with beautiful thoughts, beautiful things, beautiful ideas rippling out of our very nature of mind, like the geniuses we are, just spilling anything that comes to mind, but it has to be beautiful, it has to be glorious, it has to be forged of rainbows and unicorns, because unicorns in the Bible actually means rhino, from the Latin uni one cornus horn. In Latin, unicorn. It's a conjunction, compound word, and it becomes unicorn. And therefore, it's a mistranslation in the Bible that in some versions it says unicorns, where it really means potentially rhino, and there's some other species with a massive one horn, right? It could be. It was Africa, a region in the Middle East, fucking years ago, wasn't it? Right? It could be all sorts of animals we haven't yet discovered in the they got killed and wiped out because they're weirdos, right? And this is what this is what Nietzsche was talking about when he talked about the aesthetics of morality. All right, man is not simply a brutal, destructive animal. Okay, he can be. I'm not denying that completely. He can be a complete twat, right? But generally. Many animals thrive, and some have withered and died. And there is a bias, there is a bias going on, but it's not actually conscious, because, you know, who would want those a world full of scorpions? Who would want a, a world full of centipedes? Not many people, right? But who would want a world of butterflies, right? Bloody brilliant! Butterflies everywhere, right? So this is, this is what Nietzsche was talking about, when he talked about the morality of aesthetics. And what that means, if you're stupid, is that the morality of something, how good or moral something generally is ethically, is applied to the beauty of these creatures. You see? So butterflies are very beautiful, aren't they? No, if, if you kill the butterfly under this theory, and this is the part of the theory, Everyone would think, Jesus, what a bastard, what an evil scammer, what a swine, right? And wouldn't we all, right? But if there's a slug on a grotty night in a wintry wonderland in England, and it's raining, and you see a slug, you know no one wants to put up with shit like that, so you, 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 you expose the malice you, using special forces, like liquidine. Now, beyond this, we must move swiftly, because this is not a symposium about being grim. It's part of the Salvation World Theorem again. You see, I've been through a lot of thinking, and it has come to my mind No, nothing came to my mind. I haven't been doing enough thinking, clearly. I shame myself this night. What a man of dickhead am I to think I can save the world? Think I can save the world? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, sure, sure. Mm. Do you know how much pressure heroes are put under to save humanity when we don't even like everyone, if we're honest? That's why they're called the baddies. And the baddies sometimes have a lot of chance, right? It's really bad. It's really bad. Being a lone hero on a desert quest and a divine path of holy divinity is sometimes really pressurised and really difficult, and it's not easy. And I wouldn't actually wish the hero path on anyone. I wouldn't wish the villain path on anyone, right? I would wish the mentor path on anyone. Wouldn't you? We've got many mentors in history, right? We've got Yoda, right? We've got uh, the guy from Highlander, right? Remember that one? Oh, that was a good one. 
And uh, oh, what else? Oh, there's loads, there's loads. Trust me, the mentor figure is a key figure in cinematic lore and storytelling. And I think the mentor figure is fantastic because, oh no, he does tend to som sometimes die at the end. But it's so beautifully done, it's done with great reverence. And I don't want to ever see that, I don't want to ever see that. I'm on a mentor to live for at least three seasons. Okay? So, um, I see the world as a great big animal. Not because the song said it, the song kind of got what we're thinking about, right? The world is, right, let's see if we can do it. How's that for a random circle, eh? Okay, so what is interesting about onions? Have you learned this at school in biology and science, right? And even in animation, we use the knowledge of onions to, to, to use animation tools and software, and high-tech software. Because onions... are made of layers. And this is very interesting to all interesting people because we realise under the earth or above the earth in nature there are all these beautiful things which taste delicious especially when fried in burgers that are made of multi-layer cellular activity in the epidermis of their, cell their cellular creation. And being one of these um, vegetations, they allow us to think in cosmic ways beyond that of the norm of our own system of events within our cellular makeup. And by seeing evidence of nature in reality performing itself in unique ways, we realize reality and life and nature is not a monotopical aspect, it's not a monotopical thing, it's not a, a, a one thing, base, root, fundamental, it's a multiple, okay, it's a, it's a panoply, uh, it's a pantheon of many and varied, viva de France, said the French, right, right, but don't listen to them on Hamas per se, but apart from that, right, there's the French Voltaire, the French have some good shit, mate. Voltaire was alright, and their beer, Cronenberg 1664, is delicious. So welcome to the greatest advert in history for lager. Cronenberg 1664 is what I always drink to declare my holy world saving salvation symposiums as given. Let's hear it! Now you see there, that's pretty close to the, the centre of the spot, isn't it? This is what you have to do when you're looking down a sniper um, rifle, right? You get you get the target, and you've got to scope it like that. But you've got this right in your face, and then you've got another one actually about there, right? And, and but that's what it looks like when you're looking down the barrel of a gun. Being a not shooting a life thing, I can safely say, kids and ladies and gentlemen, and anyone of sensitive disposition, I've never shot a living thing in my life because I'm not a killer. Okay? It's okay, you can trust me. I'm here to save the world. That's all. We've all done it before, many times. And frankly, we're getting knackered and sick and tired of all of the effort we put in when at the end of the day we just come home and crash out and go to bed early. Thinking, God, what a hectic day. Okay? So there's a little thought for superhero films, because they're awesome. So, when, you know, when, when you're looking like that, that is basically what you're looking at when you're a sniper. And I'm not a sniper, but I was a marksman at school, but I'm not a sniper, I'm not in, in a military capabilities. If I was, I'd be a member of the non-lethals, which we learnt about in The Men Who Stare at Goats, which is possibly one of the most wonderful and fine films I've seen in the last 23 years. It brought so much joy and happiness to my chuckling little soul that I thought, well done humanity, another one for the win. And well done indeed. And in this, and on that said, and in this matter, I feel now 
it is time to go. I'll tell you that was on the phone and my goddamn strength supporter. Being under the Mental Health Act, um, I am injected and um, known about as one of the theoretical, allegorical forces sort of form of the X-Men. Uh, ah, that's my only explanation for it. I know there's a god, but everyone thinks I'm barking because I know there's a god. How do you square that one? I don't know. Not easily. I try to do it politely. I try to do it pleasantly. I try to do it peacefully. But still, you get online and mean people every now and then. Utter nutters, horrible bastards, who will just stamp you down for knowing there's a divine lord and not taking it into inclusion whatsoever in their grotty little philosophies, especially the atheists, who are ultra weirdos. I can't believe atheists think they're so smart, really. They must have no soul or something, because I know I'm a genius because I can magnify my human body energy to radiate and be positive and exuberant force of good within the world of betterment, you see. And I do it quite well and considerably unless I've had a smoke and drink. But the reason I have a smoke and drink is to calm me down because when I do become uber light and well, um, it's too much havoc for my mental internal stimulus vectors because I do so well in society with people as well as in do's and graces and fineries and lovelinesses that really I'm lost at sea and bewildered at the sheer complexity of this makeup we call reality. There's no way you can get a guy like Karl Marx to come along with his communist ideology and apply a long term definite a series of assumptions onto workable issues when out there you've got God knows who or what or when or how doing whatever the fuck they want to do, right? And so, this is why oppressive regimes suck, okay? And this is why totalitarian, mortal, human, fascist, or anti-fascist, fascist, uber extreme realms of oppressive humanoid treatment is most illicit to the true way of the believers. And it is in that when we have this almost perfect rifle old school, right, that they would be the target, that would be the target right there. But there is no target. Get that out of your head. We are not in a war. It's not, don't blame the media. Don't really blame, blame the media. The media are a bunch of cameramen who run up when little factions in foreign lands based on their hating woo get jumpy and start to murder innocent people and children and all sorts of ghastly things, right? That is just not on. It's not cricket, even to the Indians and the Muslims in Pakistan. Okay? No one accepts that shit. Okay? So why should we? Why should we bowl over and say, oh, I'm sorry, yes, you're right. Do that and everything will be alright. Okay? No, it's bad shit. Okay? But is the result war? Well, if you want to take part in a war, you take part in a war. In those days, there will be wars and there will be rumours of wars. But do not let this concern you. Unless you're under full-on threat attack, and I say, well, it's hard to turn the other cheek to a machine gun, isn't it? Let me leave it there, children. So, in the, in, in the experience of a machine gun situation in a foreign field, I would probably be inclined to either hide very successfully, or pick up a weapon and fucking target the fuckers back. But that's just me watching too much Call of Duty and getting it hard on thinking I could be a great heroic warrior. Defending a school of African children against being obliterated by terrorist scumbag psychopaths. We've all done it. Come on. We're human, aren't we? Hmm? So the point is no point. That is not the point. This is not the point. 
I've got nothing to say today. I just wanted to make a film because I'm bored. I'm sorry. And I apologise. I've wasted your time completely. There is no point to this entire thing today. It's just a lecture for the reasons of lecturing. It is, a, it is an empty lecture. It is a lecture without value, knowledge, reason or substance. And I suggest you escape very quickly. Because I've got another one coming up. And you're not going to like that one either. So go. Go my children. Go to the blessed land of the promised people. And survive. But do not let them hurt you. Or be wicked in sinful form. And you will realize. Come the end of days. That that land. Is right here. Right now. I thank you. I thank you for this complete cut piece of an experience. I thank you for uh, just putting up this entire shit dialogue of Wayne. But no one can defeat the Urban Ninja. That still lasts. That still stands. Good night!